Hi, this is Lisa Belladonna, and I'm here at Reverb.com today to talk about Moog synthesizers. Moog makes some of the most classic synthesizers ever made. However, there are many models of them, and I'm here today to talk about six of those models and to see which one might be right for you and your music. First up is the classic Moog Mini Moog synthesizer, which was manufactured originally between 1970 and 1980. However, it has made a comeback for a few years, and it is an unmistakable classic sound that you've heard on millions of records. Uh, one of the things that I would say that puts a Mini Moog kind of above and beyond almost any other synthesizer is that it just cuts through. It cuts through on stage, it cuts through in a mix, and uh, partially due to it's just a pure all analog signal path and filter. A Mini Moog is most known for its bass lines and its solos and lead lines on many records. And one of the things you can do with the three oscillators is tune them all unison for a very tight and direct sound. If you detune all three oscillators just slightly, you get a very lush, thick, monophonic but yet pad-like sound. So the Mini Moog synthesizer has essentially five modules for you to work with. It has the oscillator bank. Each of those have their own waveform, as well as their own octave range, as well as their fine tune. Um, you have your tuning, your glide, and modulation to affect that pitch, as well as the filter. You also have your mixing section, which will allow you to individually take out any particular oscillator that you wish. It also features a noise generator to create lots of spacey winds and effects. The VCF, or filter, that comes on the Mini Moog is one of the most beautiful sounding of all time. Completely rich, as well as the amplitude that comes out of the VCA and the output. So you can really make a sound super hot and grimy if you wish. To make use of all the oscillators that are in a Mini Moog, especially if you don't have a polyphonic synthesizer, but you want to be able to have very polyphonic sounds, what I've done here is I've tuned the first oscillator to the tonic, the first note, the second note to a major third, and the third oscillator to a fifth. So then this allows you to support your music with some spacey type pads that allowed for some chord development. So if you really want to go old school with your sound and your music, then a Mini Moog is for you. It's an extremely versatile synthesizer and will cut through any kind of music or mix and add something very special to your sound. This brings us to the Moog Sub 37. This is an extremely rich and delicious synthesizer. It's kind of become a modern classic of Moog. Um, basically, you have a full analog signal path. However, you do have digital storage. You also have a sequencer and arpeggiator, uh, so you can store sequences as well as do immediate arpeggiation changes. It has a dual mode filter, so you have different slopes to that filter, two envelope generators, two oscillators, tons of modulation possibilities. A couple of the unique features I think make uh, the Sub 37 very special is that along in the mixer with the oscillators, you have what's called a sub oscillator. So you can really immediately add some serious low end octave harmonics to what you're doing, as well as basically the drive on this filter. It's called a multi drive. It will really add a lot of, just lots of particle and depth to your sound.
So if you want the classic Moog sound, however, you want to be able to store presets, uh, be able to have some extra features not available on any of the other Moog synthesizers, um, and something that's extremely roadworthy, the Sub-37 is just for you. Next up, which is one of my personal favorites, is the Moog Grandmother Semi-Modular Analog Synthesizer. This thing's super special, and when Moog brought this out onto the scene, it really opened up a lot of possibilities for beginning synthesists. And for people who've been doing synthesis all their life, basically you have two oscillators to work with, you have one envelope generator, you have a great filter, you have lots of possibilities with the modular ins and outs. You have multiples, so you can multiply waveforms, and you can invert them with the attenuator, which creates some really unique textures on the fly. And um, for most people who come to me and ask me about getting into synthesizers, this is what I point to. It also features a very special component, which it has an arpeggiator and a digital sequencer which is really kind of the best of both worlds because you can immediately switch back and forth between using a sequencer and or an arpeggiator. So you can get a sequence rolling and get a sound that you like and then immediately if you want to change the chord progression or the inversion, you can immediately do that with the arpeggiator and then flip right back into playing free time. So it's extremely versatile synthesizer and it has inspired me in my music ever since it came out. Let's get started with some patching. Oscillator 2 is at an 8 register, and so this will kind of give it some depth, and then I can immediately go back and forth with the sync, which I'll do. Um, I have it going through a sort of short envelope with long decay, low pass filter controlling the keyboard to the envelope generator, a little bit of spring reverb to give it some grit, and a sine wave modulation that I can control either here by the mod wheel or from the pitch control, or to the filter. All right, let's have some fun. Okay, so what I have going on here is I have a, pretty much the patch that I just played you in addition to a little tighter envelope because I'm gonna start incorporating the sequencer and then I'm gonna switch the arpeggiator so you can see how you can kind of develop themes just with the keyboard alone. Now, what I have going on here with the patching is I'll start from left to right and I have the sequencer and arpeggiator's clock going into the right end of the modulation so as I shift it around, it will divide and still be in time. And I have that going into the attenuator that I can invert the signal as it goes into the filter, which is allows for a lot of different possibilities and textures and shapes. Uh, one of the things I love to do on the grandmother is I love to send the mixer out, which is essentially all the oscillators, into the high pass filter, and then come out of that into the mixer where the noise is. So you lose the noise, but then you are able to have a sort of ladder filter situation going on. It sounds really creamy and rich. And then to kind of add to that girth, I'll take oscillator two and patch it to the filter, which is, you know, pretty common and just makes it sound really nasty. So if you and your music are looking for something totally unique and analog vibed, this is a great place to start and an extremely affordable way to get into modular synthesizers. Another thing I'd like to mention that this goes wonderful with digital audio workstations because it has MIDI. And so 
you can get a, an amazing session going on in your digital audio workstation and then sync it up to the clock of the grandmother or vice versa, have the grandmother control the session and then improvise accordingly. This brings us to the amazing Moog Matriarch. Uh, this is, for me, an immediate classic synthesizer. Um, it answered a lot of uh, my own personal wishes of what I was, would love to have in a modern synthesizer with total vintage vibes. Except there's so many possibilities with it. Again, with MIDI, as well as syncing the clock to uh, anything, your rack or your other favorite semi-modular or modular synthesizers. Except what makes the Matriarch so special is that it's a four-voice paraphonic synthesizer. And this kind of, you know, puts you in a place that really makes you be selective about what you choose to do with it as a polyphonic instrument. One of the things that's also really cool in correlation with that is the sequencer is also polyphonic, which I'm going to demonstrate a little later. Um, but it's a very feature-rich synth. You have four oscillators, um, three of which can be syncable which can create some really juicy and gnarly sounds. Um, the stereo ladder filter, which is absolutely gorgeous, and you can create so many unique stereo effects and images and lush pads. Uh, you can sync the LFO to this and create really amazing swirling sounds. Dual envelope generator, as well as a stereo, also ping pong analog style delay. So many possibilities. Um, like the grandmother, which is the same layout, except you have two sets of utilities, two envelope generators, filter, extensive modulation. And with the sequencer and arpeggiator, uh, the sequencer also has four banks that you can save your favorite sequences, or you can, you can make this thing last an entire set, just on its own. So first, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you in the four voice paraphonic mode. This is a really beautiful way to play this thing. I have a slight bit of modulation going to the oscillators to create some, some lushness. I have it going through two low-pass stereo ladder filters and a little bit of uh, ping-pong delay. So what I have going on here is I have a sequence prepared. However, I'm gonna start this time in arpeggiation mode and improvise a bit and then switch it to a sequencer theme. And so with that being said, I have the sequencer CV out going into the modulation. And then I have the modulation at a very slow divide of the initial clock. And then I have the waveform of that modulation coming out into a multiple that comes into an inverter. And then basically, this same waveform comes out and splits into the VCF uh, dual ladder filter. And so what this allows is a very nice natural swirling of the filter along with the clock of the sequencer. I have all four oscillators going. I have various uh, waveforms. I have two sol and two different pulses. And then I also have this same modulation source going to the pulse with modulation just to add a little extra you know, bubble. Um, that's going to go into the envelope generator, which is set kind of nice and sweepy and slow. And again, going into the stereo delay that is also synced to the um, sequencer. And then you can also space that out so you don't have to have everything super wide stereo if you don't wish to. The sky's the limit on this instrument. <laughs> Thank you. 
you want to have the features of the grandmother, however you want a lot more expansion, obviously polyphony, for its price. There's just nothing else out there that can do everything that this can do. All right, last up in the semi-modular line, uh, Moog has given us these amazing, awesome little modules. One's called a DFAM and a Mother 32. Uh, the DFAM is kind of more designed to be a sort of rhythm machine, if you will, uh, but it's still an extremely powerful analog synthesizer that can do harmonic content as well. Um, but it is a thunderous rhythm machine, especially live. And right along with it is um, something I have grown to really fall in love with uh, so much that I have nine of them, is the Mother 32. And it is a very straightforward, yet very flexible, you know, single-voiced, semi-modular analog synthesizer that also has a sequencer, which is really amazing what you can do with these two things together. Another thing that makes the Mother 32 very special and singular is that it has a large amount of sequencer storage and banks. And this allows you to either have several different sequences in one song or to have many different sequences in one set. Some of the features that make the DFAM really awesome is that it has two oscillators and a noise source, so you can make really amazing drums with the combination of the envelope generator and the resonant filter. Um, one of the things I love about the DFAM is that the sequencer ports are not notched, so you can get really elastic sounding drums as well as sequences. The Mother 32 is feature rich. It has one oscillator that has pulse width modulation that allows you to squeeze out lots of different harmonics as well as an envelope generator and filter. And the filter can be switchable to high pass or low pass. All of these things can be controlled and manipulated with the semi-modular aspect, which I'm gonna demonstrate for you now. So for this improvisation I'm about to do, what I have going on right now is the DFAM is the master clock controlling the Mother 32. With the Mother 32, I have different things set up so I can take an LFO to go to the filter as well as to the oscillator to create different sort of intervals along with the sequence that's going on. Um, one of the things that I really love to do is to sync things to the pulse width modulation and that squeezes out a lot of different kinds of sounds as the sequence rolls along. Whether you're doing classic electronic music, hip hop, or you just want to have a whole other texture of sounds and rhythms at your fingertips, and especially if you're not a keyboard player, the DFAM and the Mother 32 would be the right choice for you. So there you have it. We went through six different Moog synthesizers today. I hope some of this is helpful and inspirational to you to choose a Moog synthesizer and make it part of your setup. Yeah.